about math class, we've been told never to divide by zero. We've simply called it undefined. However, I think that's just ignoring the issue. What if I told you that 1 divided by 0 was not undefined, but instead it was something else? Today I'm going to blow your mind, because I'm going to show you... Infinite Mathematics! So what is the idea of infinite mathematics? Well, it is the idea that 1 divided by 0 equals infinity. Oh, come on. It's no different than the idea that the square root of negative 1 equals i. No one complains about that. Sure, your math teacher might say that 1 divided by 0 doesn't exist, but plenty of top-level organizations beg to differ. Look at Google. Google's own calculator states that 1 divided by 0 equals infinity. And the AP board, the pinnacle of higher education, surely it mustn't believe that 1 divided by 0 exists, right? But look at its physics AP sheet. There it is. The tangent of 90 degrees, also known as 1 divided by 0, equal to infinity. Convinced yet? Oh, you want to see proofs? Oh, I've got them. There are four ways to prove something. Graphically, numerically, algebraically, and verbally. First, we'll do graphically. Take the graph of 1 divided by x. As x gets closer and closer to 0, the line skyrockets up. Where is it headed? It is headed towards infinity. And when does it reach infinity? At x equals 0. A similar scenario occurs numerically for the function 1 divided by x. As x gets closer to 0, y increases without bound. As it gets closer and closer, y eventually must hit infinity, and it does so at x equals 0. Algebraically is a little different. There is a property of limits that states that the limit of a rational function is equal to the limit of its numerator divided by the limit of its denominator. Let's let this rational function equal 1 divided by x, and c equals 0. We will use limits from the right, I'll explain later. Look what happens. 1 divided by 0, proven algebraically to be infinity. And finally, let's put this into words. From the right, in a fraction, as the denominator approaches 0, the value approaches and eventually hits infinity. That's right. I have just proved graphically, numerically, algebraically, and verbally that 1 divided by 0 equals infinity. However, there are some strange things that occur in infinite mathematics. Oh, come on. Imaginary numbers have plenty of weird properties, but no one complains about those. Remember how we only looked from the right side when we proved that 1 divided by 0 equals infinity? That's because 1 divided by positive 0 equals positive infinity. That's right, 0, just like every other number, can have a sign. Look at it this way. If a normal fraction is negative, then either the numerator or denominator must be negative as well. The same is true in infinite mathematics. Negative infinity can either equal negative 1 over 0, or 1 over negative 0. Another property of infinite mathematics is the existence of 2 infinity and infinity squared. 2 divided by 0 equals 2 infinity, and 1 divided by 0 squared equals infinity squared. The existence of 2 infinity can be proven graphically, numerically, algebraically, and verbally. Another concept is approach numbers. These are numbers that approach their value from a designated side. The approach in the upper right hand corner indicates which side the numbers approach their value from. These are helpful when finding the limits of rational functions without graphing. Basically, it helps determine if a zero is positive or negative. So you may be wondering how these concepts interact with each other. First off, adding infinity and infinity gets you to infinity. 
multiplying infinity and infinity gets you infinity squared. When adding infinities of different powers, the infinity with the higher power cancels out infinities with lower powers. Numbers without infinities are cancelled out by infinities with a power that is higher than zero. However, be careful if a lower power infinity must be cancelled out in the middle of a problem, such as in the one above. If the result is cancelled out, then the answer is wrong as the lower power infinity is not there anymore. Instead, operations must be used to find the real solution. Infinity to a negative power equals zero. This is because one divided by infinity equals zero is the converse of one divided by zero equals infinity. Approach numbers can be added to normal numbers and the approach will be kept. If the sum is zero, then the approach becomes the sign of the zero. If an approach number is multiplied by a negative number, its approach changes signs. Keep this in mind when subtracting them. Approach numbers cannot be added, multiplied, or squared without their approach becoming indeterminate. This is detonated by a plus or minus sign where the approach is. If the approach number becomes a zero, factoring must be used to prevent the sign of the zero from becoming indeterminate as well. In a similar vein, zero cannot be added or subtracted from itself without becoming plus or minus zero. However, it can be multiplied. If multiplied by an approach number, the approach is disregarded and the only the sign is used. Finally, zero divided by zero is still indeterminate and its value depends on the context of the problem. Thus, things must be factored and cancelled to find out the true value. Here is a summary of all the properties of infinite mathematics. Now let's put them to use. One application of infinite mathematics is that it can be used to make finding infinite limits and limited infinity just a little bit easier. First, let's start with a simple problem. To solve this, plug in 1 plus. Then combine them, which forms 1 over positive 0. Finally, 1 over 0 equals infinity. And there you have it. Now let's try a harder problem. First, <clears throat> let's try plugging in negative 1 minus. However, notice that there is a negative 1 minus squared, which would make this approach number indeterminate. Instead, we must factor. <clears throat> then, we can now plug in the approach number. This forms negative 0, and then you multiply negative 0 times negative 1, which equals positive 0. This results in infinity. This problem would normally be a pain to graph and solve. However, with infinite mathematics, it's easy. First of all, don't plug in negative 1 minus right away, because you know that that's just going to result in indeterminateness. Instead, we know that negative 1 is a factor of the function because, well, it wouldn't be an infinite mathematics problem without it. So we use synthetic division with negative 1 as the factor. And there, now we have a factored version. With the in part that goes to zero determined, now we can plug in the number. Plug in negative one minus. Now start to simplify. This turns into zero, negative zero, because it has a uh, negative approach. Then, you can disregard the approach on the right side because you know that they're not going to become zero. It's not a problem if the approach is indeterminate. Just keep simplifying. At this part, you can simplify this fraction to turn into <coughs> negative 1 over 2 times 0. And this will become negative 1 over half infinity. Because most math teachers don't accept negative one-half as being able to be next to infinity, you have to turn this into simply negative infinity. And there you have your answer.
Keep in mind that infinite mathematics can only be used to find one-sided limits. If you must find a two-sided limit, then you must find both one-sided limits from the left and from the right, and compare them. Now let's try some limits at infinity. First, plug in infinity. Second of all, cancel out the smaller numbers. And finally, cancel out the infinities and you're left with the answer. Here's another example. First, plug in negative infinity. Now, cancel out the 3 because it is a smaller power than the negative infinity. The top one becomes 5 infinity squared. Now, you can cancel out infinity squared with infinity to produce negative 5 infinity. Now, since most math teachers don't accept that infinity can have number in front of it, we simply make it negative infinity, and there's your answer. Infinite mathematics can be a great way to solve infinite limits and other problems. Let's stop denying that 1 divided by 0 exists and embrace a new branch of algebra. Infinite mathematics.